You might remember that we moved in recently to a new house, and the house next door to us it was a vacant lot when we moved in. So all of a sudden, they started building, and it's been so exciting. I actually was kind of looking forward to this aspect of it. To see a house built from the ground up was amazing. And it seems like just in a few weeks, they went from a hole in the ground to now all the sides are up, the roof is on, and it's, it's taking shape. It's so cool. But one of the very first things that they do uh, is something I didn't even know about. And I have now discovered footings. <laughs> Footings. The footings are the part of the foundation that actually touches the earth. They dig long trenches and they fill it with concrete. And after that cures, then they build the forms and build the concrete foundation walls. That's, that's the part I was aware of was the foundation walls on top of the footings. So those footings have to be level because the, the foundation and then the walls of the house are all going to be built and supported by those footings. So the, the footings really set the tone for the whole house. Very, very important. You'll see how that applies in just a minute. Would you turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7, 24 to 29? Matthew 7, 24 to 29. And today we are wrapping up the Sermon on the Mount. And through the whole Sermon on the Mount... Jesus has presented himself, and he has presented his kingdom vision for his kingdom people, as Scott McKnight says. Jesus is calling you to do two things. He's calling you to trust him for salvation. You and I, we cannot save ourselves. We are sinners who cannot save ourselves. But he is also calling you and calling me to do what he says. Put your faith in him. And do what he says. So Jesus concludes his most famous sermon with three word pictures and three warnings designed to help you to be able to rejoice on the final judgment day. So a couple weeks ago, we talked about this, this word picture of the gates and the paths. And, and Jesus said, follow the crown, who is Jesus, not the crowd. Follow the crown, not the crowd. And then last week we talked about the good tree, the good, good fruit, the bad fruit. And we talked about how Jesus was saying, you are not saved by your works, but you will be judged by your works. And that's something we don't always stop and think about. Then in today's passage, Jesus then told us a short story just to illustrate his last warning. It's Matthew chapter 7. Verses 24 to 27. Jesus said, Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey, doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. It will come to nothing. It will be ruined. And I have a, a, this picture that I, I bet Jesus was picturing in his mind a dry riverbed. And if you just build a house just right on the sand in or next to that riverbed, and then the floods come, that house is in trouble. But he, he contrasts two different builders and their foundations. And it's not so much that one of those builders just carefully chose to build on build rock, and the other builder carefully chose to build his house on sand. It's more of a contrast between a deliberate, careful choice and a careless choice. A deliberate, careful choice and a careless choice. In one of the other biographies of Jesus, the Gospel of Luke, he tells this story and he adds that Jesus said the wise builder digs deep, and lays the foundation on solid rock. Wow. 
So what is this foundation that Jesus is talking about that we need to build our lives on? Well, he, he explains what it is. It is hearing Jesus' word and obeying it. The foundation, the good, solid rock foundation for your life is obedience to Jesus' word. It is obedience that demonstrates your true faith in him. In James chapter 2, verses 14 and 17, uh, James writes, What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say that if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? And it's gonna be down to verse 17. So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Wow, that is challenging. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead faith and useless faith. Faith without actions that demonstrate it's real is useless, James said. So in Jesus' story, there's these two builders, and both of them had a similar vision. They both wanted to build a good house, and they both did build houses that looked good. And they looked sturdy to anyone looking from the outside in. But when God's day of reckoning came, that storm, one of the houses collapsed. It was ruined. What made the difference? Why did that house collapse? Well, the difference was the foundation. The difference was the foundation. So what's under the surface in your life, that's what's important. When you face tests and trials in your life, or you face judgment day at the end of this life, the strength of your foundation really is the only thing that matters. It's the only thing that's going to prop you up. So Jesus is not contrasting those who hear and those who don't hear. Those who hear Jesus' words and those who don't hear. That's not, that's not the contrast he's making in this passage. He is contrasting those who hear and obey his teachings, and those who hear and choose to not obey. I, I love the way the message paraphrase puts it. It is a paraphrase. It's not a, a literal translation of the Bible, but uh, it's, uh, it is, it is uh, presented by a, a Bible scholar. This is what he said. These words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life. Think about it. They're not homeowner improvements to your standard of living. They're not just painting a wall. That's not, Jesus isn't just talking about painting a wall or planting a flower. These are foundational words, words to build a life on. If you work these words into your life, you are like, you could be compared to a smart carpenter who built his house on solid rock. Wow. Church, can I just be honest with you? We bring so many teachings from the Word of God, and I hear teachings from the Word of God also, from, uh, from you know, podcasts, other, other sermons and stuff, and it can almost make you numb at times. And you hear, we're supposed to do this, we're supposed to do that, we're supposed to do this, we're supposed to do that, and then the danger is we can just go out and do none of it. And we can come to church or come to even an online gathering like this, and, and we can uh, say, say to ourselves, well, I'm good. The rest of the life is not connected to this. I did my church thing, so therefore, i.e., I am a Christian. And then we just go out and do whatever with our lives. And unfortunately, in my role as a pastor, I see when the walls are crumbling in people's lives. And it is not pretty. It is very, very painful. So I implore you to listen to these words from Jesus. It was the final words in the Sermon on the Mount. He just preached and taught a whole bunch of stuff, but the last thing he said, he wanted us to remember. Be like that smart carpenter. Build your life on the foundation of hearing God's words and obeying them. If you only hear God's words 30 minutes a week on Sunday, that is not enough. That is not enough to build your life on. You need to know these words, if you are a follower of Jesus, so well that you could pray them. 
that you could quote them when, when you're in trouble, that you could quote them when you got a friend in trouble, you need to pray for that person. That is building your life on the foundation of hearing Jesus' words and obeying them. They become a part of your life. They're worked into your life. So Jesus brings this whole message, and it's so powerful, and it's so, it's like all the little bits and pieces he's taught in a bunch of different places. He brings it all together in this one sermon. And what happens at the end when he says, when he gives us this warning about the house on sand? Verse 28, Matthew 7, 28. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike their teachers of religious law. In other words, the crowd erupted in applause. It was a standing O, people. Everyone's up. Wow, that was amazing. And a big difference, and, and I get this, the typical Jewish teacher of their day, they had to back up their teachings by quoting other teachers, other sources. Jesus' message was so different because he is the source. He is the source. He is the fountain of wisdom and knowledge. And so he just brought it out of him, the, the, all the truth, all the love, all the wisdom for living our lives and for building a strong life. And he invites you and me to be a part of that kingdom. So in the Sermon on the Mount, did Jesus just come and dump a whole bunch more rules on you? So in other words, great, we're free from the law of Moses, 600 and some commands. And now Jesus comes along, did he just give us a whole bunch of new commands or additional commands? No. That is not what Jesus came to do. He invites you into a life of faith and fellowship with him with Almighty God. And in this kingdom life he invites you into, there's mutual love and respect for others. There's mutual submission in marriages and in relationships. There are boundaries that protect you and his Holy Spirit to guide you. The more you rely on Jesus, the more he empowers you to follow him. And in the end, you will inherit eternal life. In Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 to 7, Paul, an early church leader, wrote, And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. So it's not enough just to start. You've got to continue. Continue to do what? to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Wow. We started this little, little mini series with that verse and I want to just end with that as well. It's not enough just to make a start. Don't just, you don't just get to the gate in life. You get on the narrow path and follow Jesus. You check your own fruit. Make sure that the fruit of your life is that you are obeying Jesus' words. And you let your roots grow deep down into Jesus. He is your sustainer. All of your nutrients, your strength, your spiritual strength comes from Him. Then your faith will grow strong you will overflow with thankfulness. You will have such a happy, joyous life that you just can't help but overflow with gratefulness to God. All this plus eternal life. Wow. You guys, I'm not calling you to a life of drudgery. I'm not calling you to a life of rules. I'm calling you to a relationship with Jesus that changes your life and works itself out through obeying Jesus and his word so that what you end up with is a life with a firm foundation that's not going to topple over in the storms of life or the final storm, judgment day, the day of reckoning, the day of accounting before Almighty God when no more excuses will be available. It's just you and Him, eye to eye. And this is what I just speak over you and I declare over you, you're going to hear. On Judgment Day, you're going to hear 
well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. Let's celebrate together. Come on. Come on. I've been, I've been waiting for you. You've been following me your whole life. And now let's just enjoy being together. Wow. So good. If I could summarize this message, it would be this way. When you grow deep in Jesus, you'll live strong forever. When you grow deep in Jesus, you'll live strong forever. Not just now, not just for the next 20, 40, 60 years, forever. And I think that's a promise we're living for. When you grow deep in Jesus, you'll live strong forever. So if you've put your faith in Jesus, here's, here's the thing. Here's the bottom line of the Sermon on the Mount. Do what he says. That's it. Do what he says. I can't, you say, I know. So you got to do it in his power. You got to do it in his strength. You got to do it following his example and resting in his arms. Dig into his word for yourself. For yourself. Pretty much every day. <laughs> Get into God's word. Open it up. Read it. Ask God to, to reveal it and, to you and help you to understand it. And follow Jesus with all your heart. That's what he wants. Well done, good and faithful servant. That's what you're going to hear. Well done. Amen. I'd like to close this message with a time of prayer. And I know everyone's online today. So can I just encourage you to just hush the kids for a minute and maybe even have them come alongside you. If you're with your family, why don't you join hands as we pray? And uh, I just encourage you to get up off of that couch, stand. Like, let's make this a time of prayer. It's, let, let's do this together. Join hands with uh, the people in your household. You can Purell later. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> but, but let's pray, all right? Let's pray. Would you, would you pray with me right now? Lord, I pray that you would help us to build the house of our life on a good, strong, solid, bedrock foundation of hearing your words and obeying them. Lord, I pray that you would help us to not just be hearers only of the word and be deceived, but I pray that you would help us, Lord. I pray that you would tear down all deception and that you would help us to be people who not only hear the word, but do the word, people who follow you. And Lord, none of us is perfect. And I am the first one to say, I am not perfect. And so, Lord, I pray that you would help us to, to just stay in a, in a constant cycle of, of uh, trying to follow you, praying to follow you, following your example, leaning on you, and repenting when we mess up. And Lord, I pray that as we repent, we would not only say, I'm sorry, but that we would also do a 180 and follow you in the opposite direction. <laughs> So Lord, we need your help. We cannot do it alone. And I ask for your help. I ask you to help each person who's listening today uh, in our live stream, but then also in the future as people go back and listen to this recording. I pray, Lord, you would help us to build with, on a solid, strong foundation of obeying you. I have one more prayer invitation for you. And I don't know if you've ever actually put your faith in Jesus. Maybe you haven't come up to the, the narrow gate yet. Jesus is that narrow gate that leads to the narrow way. Maybe you're still on the popular way, the, the way all the crowd is going. Well, today I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus, to come up to him, the gate, and to begin to follow him as the pathway to eternal life. I want to ask you and invite you to become his apprentice Apprentice isn't just someone who thinks nice thoughts about Jesus. It's someone who studies him, learns from him, works alongside of him, gets in mission with him. So uh, it's, it's not an easy life I'm calling you to. It's the best life. If today you want to put your faith in Jesus, would you just pray a prayer with me? And I want to lead you in a prayer. And you're not praying it to me. Praying it to Jesus. Uh, and I'll just coach you in it. So would you just pray after me? And, and if you're with somebody, maybe in your family or a friend you're watching with, and you're not sure if, if they have put their faith in Jesus yet, why not just look at them and say, shall we pray this prayer? Would you like to pray this prayer? Let's do it. All right, so I'm going to just coach you. Would you just repeat after me? Let's do it right now. Jesus, I invite you into my life. Please forgive me 
of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and be your apprentice. Do what you say, starting now. Be the Lord, the leader, the master of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer today, uh, I would just like to know. So would you take out your cell phone and text that same phone number we talked about earlier in the service? Just text the word restart because that's what you're doing. You're restarting the foundation of your life today. Text restart to 97,000 and make sure you give me enough minimal contact info. Fill out that little form so I can get back to you with some next steps. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks, Pastor Garen. And, you know, I love how you made this distinction that this message isn't about people who hear God's word or versus those who don't hear God's word. This is about people who hear God's word and obey. This is about people who hear God's word and obey. And that's just so great. Well, hey, if this is your first time with us, um, would you just text the word GREET to 97,000? That will will just um, cue us in to uh, just just help us to connect with you because we want to walk this journey together with you. Um, Also, um, if you are watching online, which I know that every single one of you are, (laughs) would you just hit that subscribe button? It helps a lot of people find us online, and it's going to be great. Everyone else, I will see you next Sunday on the live stream. God bless.